the word revival right now is getting thrown around a lot. Um, obviously, Asbury's, uh, the Asbury revival is on a lot of people's minds. And, and a lot of other college campuses seem to be having similar things being sprung up, some planned, some mm-hmm. um, not planned. When we talk about revival, what does that mean? How do we define that? Um, and what are the characteristics of a good, true revival? Yeah. Uh, the word is in the evangelical news a lot lately for the reasons that you mentioned and perhaps some others. But, mm-hmm. you know, for example, in Psalm 85, the psalmist prayed, will you not yourself, talking to the Lord, will you not yourself revive your people once again that your people may rejoice in you? So revival is a biblical concept. Uh, I think in many of our churches, at least in my context and perhaps our Southern Baptist context, revival sometimes uh, simply means a series of planned, scheduled meetings. And there's nothing wrong with that at all, whether you call it winter Bible conference or fall Bible studies, a guest speaker that's going to come in, you know, for a a series of meetings. Uh, And I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with calling that revival, but that is not necessarily in and of itself revival. The word obviously means a a renewing of life, a, a resuscitation of something that was previously alive, but now needs to be brought back to life again. Mm-hmm. And certainly we know that biblically that does not mean that someone was saved and lost and now they need uh, the rebirth right. again. But a revitalization of that, that passionate love relationship with the Lord. Mm-hmm. I think Revelation 2 and the church at Ephesus that had sound doctrine and, and devoted work, but their love for Christ had grown cold. A reversal of that, a returning to the things you did at the first yeah. Uh, I think is a good characteristic of revival. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story, though, as far as what I think some of the characteristics of revival are. When I first started preaching revivals, which was pretty much early in my pastorate, so now 20 years of uh, preaching revivals and conferences, my wife would ask me when I would call her on the way home, you know, how did it go to me? And uh, early on, I was foolish enough and naive enough to try to answer. You know, I would say, oh, it went great tonight. You know, the words flowed, the illustrations were seemed fresh, and God moved, and there were this many decisions. Um, and I don't think it's ever wrong to assess a service in that way. But there were other times I would tell her it was awful. Thoughts didn't flow well. There was no response. The crowd seemed dead, those sorts of things. Yeah. And, uh, and again, uh, those can be pretty obvious assessments at times. Mm-hmm. But the longer that I pastor and the more that I have experienced, she and I have a little routine now where she'll ask, how did it go? And I will say, I don't know. <laughs> there is a sense in which the true fruit of revival can't be measured at the end of the service. You can assess that it was a good service, an enjoyable service, that God spoke to your heart through the preaching of the word. There may have been exuberance in the worship through song. But as far as whether it was a biblical sense of revival, that true returning to the works you did at the first, Revelation 2. Um, I think it takes some time to really measure that. Now, um, the revivals that I preach tend to be in the spring and fall. Those are general calendar times churches uh, have revival. Right. I now try to remind the congregation each time that if it's a spring revival, the best way for me to determine if we really had anything approaching revival would be to call the pastor six months later in the fall Hmm. and ask some diagnostic question. Um, Do you have more Sunday school workers willing to serve? Do you have more people on mission that are sharing their faith? Um, You were below budget when I was with Is there a renewed sense of Christian stewardship and supporting the work Mm -hmm. of the Lord? Um, The couples that were on the brink of divorce, what, what has God done in their marriages, that sense of long-lasting fruit, I believe is the better and more biblical standard to determine if a biblically defined revival has occurred. Nothing wrong with exuberance. I like expressive worship and absolutely nothing wrong with shouting, clapping, uh, singing, and lifting of hands and things of that nature. But a lot of those things could happen even at a secular rock concert or a country concert. So I think revival can have those things accompanying, it, mm-hmm. but those things in and of themselves are not revival and are not even necessarily indicative 
that it is a revival. I think the longer lasting fruit uh, is the best standard to, to measure if God has really done that revitalizing work. And so what we see maybe in Asbury, we really can't know um, the effects of that or whether it was really revival for those students until we see what it looks like on that campus mm -hmm. and then around that campus as well because other people have come in flooded in to to go to that university we really can't know probably about six to eight months um what god really did in that yeah. time a good analogy may be someone who perhaps they struggle with their weight and they're starting a diet mm -hmm. and let's say they need to lose 25 pounds well at the end of the week someone may ask is your diet work well it may be it may not be it's really too soon to tell there can be some early signs, but as far as is it working for the desired goal, uh, time in many ways is just the best best measuring rod. Yeah. One thing I, I found interesting that you said was when talking about the product of revival, really talking about the church members. Um, I think one, t one thing we see with, with the revivals is we talk about how many people got saved. First of all, praise God for yeah. that. Amen. Um, that is awesome. It seems though that the point Really, the purpose of revival is to take the congregation, the people that are members, the people that, that are following Christ, that have had that kind of their relationship go down, fall mm -hmm. down, and, mm -hmm. and, and they need to be brought back up again. Would you say that is correct? Really, the focus is more on the saved congregation? Yeah, in the truest biblical sense of the word, it has often been said you can't be revived until you've first been vived. Mm -hmm. And um, there's certainly nothing wrong and much right perhaps in a series of revival meetings to have an intentional evangelistic focus for example many of the revivals that i preach i may announce that you know i'm preaching to the church all week but on thursday night i'm going to be bringing a simple salvation message i may challenge the people to try to invite and bring their unconverted friends and loved ones right um and that may be done in the context of a series of re what we might call revival meetings. Mm. But yeah, revival by definition is something for the for the believer whose love has begun to grow cold, perhaps through apathy, indifference, or maybe some undealt with sin in their life, and they just need a fresh work of the Holy Spirit in their life.